All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Until then, adios. Conversations from the Dark Side. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the final Conversations from the Dark Side for the 2024 Halloween season. I'm your good buddy, your good pal, and mysterious stranger, Amigo Aaron. Tonight, joined by a man who drives cautiously and quietly through dark streets in an unmarked van. I give you the Creeper, Rob Flock O'Hara. I don't know if uh, you drive a van with no windows if you want the nickname The Creeper. I don't well, know. Let me if you drive a van with no windows slowly through neighborhoods, you're a creeper, pal. That's, <laughs> you've already been given that name. There's no way around it. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, boy, uh, time sure flies uh, when you're having fun, Flack. And we, uh, ha- I can't believe that we've uh, busted through three episodes of Conversations from the Dark Side this season. It went really fast this year for me. And uh, I'm glad everyone tuned in for the final edition uh, tonight. I think we've got some good stuff on tap uh, tonight. As we, I've, I've uh, very cunningly titled this one "Halloween Horrors," uh, given our proximity to Halloween, the fact that there's some horrors involved, uh, and hopefully we can uh, give you some nightmare fuel to get you going uh, for the next week, up leading up to Halloween. You know, this is the Halloween season. Uh, Flack, have I saw that you put your giant and skeleton together? Uh, what are you and your clan doing out there to celebrate the season this year? Oh, you know the skeleton. Uh, that's a big part of it. When you when you have a twelve foot skeleton, you know some people like like you might put up some uh, you know little like a pumpkin or a jack o' lantern, but that's what everybody does. You know sure. what I mean? But when you put up a twelve foot skeleton, it lets people know you're all in. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're not like like you're. Um, uh, you're not just a a fair weather spirit Halloween person. By the way, have you been to Spirit Halloween this yeah. year? Or you know, I did not. It, we usually go every year, and I hate to say it, but this year we just have not gotten into the Halloween frame of mind. Uh, fam- the family here. It's I was mentioning earlier. It's been sort of. Uh, it's my son's first year of high school, and so it's been crunch time, mm. trying to catch up some homework every night. And uh, uh, Teresa's been out doing ghost stuff during the weekends, but me and Luke haven't really gotten a chance to dig into it too much. So we haven't gotten anything over at Spirit this year. But there are Spirit stores around here. Have you have you went to check out their wares this year? We did. You know, they've got, it seems like, new animatronics. They have new animatronics every year. Um, but they all kind of seem like they do the same stuff <laughs> as the ones last year. They just look a little different. Um, I'm always surprised by costumes from our childhood that are making a comeback but for no particular reason like i saw a big section of garfield costumes and i was like are, are the kids are kids in a garfield again you know there was also um gizmo uh from the gremlins and i thought my kids don't know who that is i don't think so i just thought that was kind of weird I wonder if they just don't, like, uh, the people that own Spirit don't just get some really screaming good deals on these licenses. <laughs> and they're like, listen, we're bringing back Garfield. Where's Marmaduke, by the way? Uh, or right. any a number of these old pets. <laughs> because, you know, but I, and also, what kid is begging their mom badger and mom, I've got to be Garfield this year. Right. That's the one all the kids are wearing. Uh, the last time, you know, it hurts my heart to say this but the boy doesn't trick or treat anymore he's you know he's 15 years is old done? Is done? he's out yeah. and the last couple years of trick or treat he wore the same costume at least maybe three years in a row which was as well as inflatable dinosaur costumes oh I mean, yeah they're cool yeah. man i'd love to have had one of those when i was a kid uh, sure. but uh um yeah this year the only as usual this is the as usual i'm the only one that has a costume here i get a costume for the show every year <laughs> you know and so i've got my in fact i'm looking up here at it for uh, for the amigo show but uh, uh yeah so we're we've been kind of bummer on here on the halloween spirit but 
that's one of the things I like about doing this show because uh, when mm-hmm. I feel like my Halloween spirit's on the wane, that's when I crank up a little a little dark side action. Uh, and I know you have picked out some very interesting uh, tales uh, to talk about tonight. Uh, uh, why don't you lay down some of the spooky on us, Flack? What do you got first up out of the gate? Listen, I, I, I have been saving this story for you. I wanted to tell you this story around the time when I first heard it, but I've been saving it for tonight uh, because it's such a good one. And this is the story of Old Lynn Creek. Now, I heard about this story from a local, although it wasn't local to me. Uh, earlier uh, this year, you remember, we had the uh, the big eclipse. Oh, yes. And uh, my wife and I drove. There was a... a to that uh, crazy town. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. it was it was not too far. Like, a, you know, a, a few hour drive from us. And that was the whole uh, totality kind of thing, you know. And so I was talking to a, a lady who uh, was there. She had just had some, and she, they had some tables and, and things for sale and stuff. And she seemed kind of interesting. And she asked me um, if we were going to go out to Old Lynn Creek. And I said, no, I never, I never heard about this. So this is a, um, it's a lake. Uh, it's, it's in the, uh, it's a lake that is at the base of the Ozark mountains. Okay. Now, uh, a long, almost a hundred years ago, this was, uh, like the 1930s, let's say, uh, there, it, uh, it was before it was a lake. It was just this basin, you know, at the bottom of the mountains and the, and there was a town there. Uh, they had, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, everything that would be in a town, there's houses, uh, you know, all the things. And then right in the middle of the town, there were these three churches and, and, uh, there was kind of two smaller ones and then one really big church in the middle of this. Right. And so, um, what happened was in the 1930s, uh, the flow of the water changed and the basin began to fill in. It began, uh, to become, a lake and so uh this this lake was going to flood uh the town and that's what happened so it filled in uh it is now f- the town where the town was is 40 feet underwater okay uh now here's where things get a little spooky the water levels of that lake uh, fluctuate because it's connected, you know, to uh, uh, to the inflow, the outflow. So the the lake the lake moves up and down, right? And um, because of that, when the water falls, people have reported seeing the steeple of the tallest church. Uh, people who've been out boating, people who have been fishing from the uh, uh, from the the shore, people have said when they're out there, they have seen the steeple of the church. Some people, and this is people who don't even know about the history of what happened, have reported hearing uh, the church steeple bell ringing. You know, they say, oh, that's, that's, uh, the water's gone down low enough, you know, and, and the steeple is above water and, and the bell is still there and it still rings. But and here's where things get real interesting. When they went through the uh, historical society in the 1930s, they had photography. And it turns out before the lake flooded that area, the town was torn down. So the town is not there. And there are literally pictures where they burned down the church. They tore down the buildings and they burned the church. And outside the church is a cemetery. The cemetery just stayed there. So underneath this lake uh, is a cemetery, which is covered in water, but there is no church. So all these people that report, you know, seeing the steeple of the church, that church is not there. It's physically not there. And the people that hear the ringing of the bell of this church, uh, it is literally not there. Again, a lot of people who report hearing this or have reported seeing this, don't know the history. They don't know uh, that there was a town there. And until they found these photos, like in the historical society, they didn't know that the town had uh, actually been burned down. So we did not go uh, to uh, uh, Old Lynn Creek, but the next time we go that way, like on a road trip or something, 
we are definitely planning on making a stop and going out there and sitting for a little while and just seeing what we see. You know, it, life is funny. <clears throat> and it's funny that because I had no idea you were telling this, this tale here. And it just it's, it strikes me as funny because so um, me and Boat played an Elvira game a month or so ago, less than a month on Amigos. And we got to talking about Elvira. I'm a big fan of Elvira. Uh, yeah, she, she's sure. been around forever. Love her. And so uh, our good buddy Graham W. Uh, Vebke uh, turned me on. She says, "Listen, you got to got to check out her audio book. She did an audio book." Mm, and so okay. I finally sat down today, and when I was, I had a long drive, so I listened to about three and a half hours of the book. And so in the book. She lived in a town in Kansas that was in a valley, and they had a lot of flooding one year. And keep in mind, she was the, she was born in like the fifties, and so what they mm. had to do was they had to flood the town, <laughs> and so they everyone in the oh. town had to leave the town. And she had mentioned uh, in the book that uh, her, I believe her and her mother had went past the lake where the town used to be. And you, and if the water was low enough, you could see the steeple of the church sticking out of the water. And then you, you told heard me this, this today. Tale. I heard this today. <laughs> this, I mean, so you think of the amount of weird things that had to happen for these stories to line up. But there you go. <laughs> By the way, just an FYI, I'm about uh, halfway through this Elvira book, and which she reads. By the way, mm -hmm. it is out. I haven't got to the part where she becomes Elvira yet. And it is oh. outstanding. I mean, it's a must mm -hmm. listen. It's and with her reading it, double trouble. But it, it is funny that that would, that that very story would, <laughs> would come up. That, in that's there. weird. That is weird, man. You know. You know. I, those. Oh, my dad told me. You know, West Virginia has um, a lot of little towns in it that were, and some. We, there are some towns here that had the same treatment done, uh, the, with the flooding. And you mentioned that they said they'd burn the town. Uh, to the ground. My dad swears to me that not too far from our house uh, on the river, out in the mountains, is a town that they flooded, and they left it completely intact. That's what he tells me. So I wonder if it was commonplace to burn that stuff to the ground like that. It's odd to me that they'd take the trouble to burn down like the church, but they would keep. But yeah. they would just leave the cemetery. There. I know. <laughs> Doesn't that that seem right, does it? <laughs> yeah, the um, well, what it, what it reminded me of, and I don't know if we've talked about this on the show, but I I read a theory about um, you know, basically memory imprinting. I'm sure you, you're probably sure. familiar with that, um, but uh, I don't know what you think about that. But uh, it it just, I mean, that's what it seems like to me. You know, of these things, like especially with the cemetery being there, and so many people, you know whatever that are still there that would remember where that church is. It's almost like the memory of that church is still in that place for some reason, even though the church is gone. Especially well, when you told me that it was under 40 foot of water, that's a high mm -hmm. steeple. If it's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, you know, so well, I think when the water comes down, so like all the time people don't see it, but when the water drops, that's when they had reported seeing it. You know? That's what a, what a, what a, an, odd, an unusual tale. You know, I someone mentioned, I think it was a Hooper scuba diver, said he'd like to go scuba diving there. And after you mentioned the graveyard party, he's like, yeah, maybe not. That's my, maybe not the yeah. worst idea. Um, you know, I, I got to go, uh, uh, we went on a, a vacation. We got to go snorkeling uh, one time. And um, uh, I, I thought the exact same thing when I heard this. I was like, man, to be able to see a, um, you know, a town, to be able to go down there and just, because it would almost be like you'd be flying, you know, like like you could float through a window or go, I, that seems like it'd be, yeah, again, not the cemetery part. I could pass on that, but maybe, maybe there'd be a concession stand down there or something. <laughs> That's the part I want. You know, just the, just the speaking of cemeteries uh, for a minute, I heard a... Uh... I heard a show the other day, and these guys, this guy was talking about how much he enjoyed uh, hanging out in cemeteries. Uh, not because mm -hmm. um, he was a ghost hunter or anything, but because, I don't know, it centered him or put his life in perspective or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
You know, the mm-hmm. Chud, my buddy the Chud, he used to, uh, he'd go out when he used to, back when he took care of himself, he would go out to the cemetery, and he would, that's where he would do laps out there. And walk, oh. or, yeah, he would walk to the cemetery to get exercise. And I always thought to myself, what a, mm-hmm. I mean, anytime I'm in the cemetery, it's either I'm at a funeral or I'm doing some kind of spooky, goofy, ghosty baloney, you know. And so, uh, do you, are you the kind of person that hangs out in a cemetery? And, and also, along those lines, when you hear about they've, they've sank all these cemetery plots with all these bodies in, I mean, did, did you think that, how does that strike you? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, it's hard to think of, uh, um, you know, people putting things on top of cemeteries without thinking of things like poltergeist, you know. Yeah, <laughs> where, that's a very first got, thing that comes out of my head, that movie. Yeah, yeah, you got a haunted thing because, you know, you've got um, these bodies um, underneath it, you know. Um, I mean, here's the thing is that, you know, like I, I cemeteries... I think in general, like especially the U.S. is kind of a, a, a relatively new. I mean, you know, the past few hundred years, right? Relatively new thing. Like I, I read a thing one time that said um, from a, a Native American, they said, you know, cemeteries were like when someone died, you dug a hole, and that's <laughs> that's where they were. So and the whole country was a cemetery, you know, at one point in time. So there's no telling what what's what's underneath the ground anywhere that you happen to be. Um, you know, as far as like hanging out in cemeteries, um, it's kind of weird because you, you do get that like calm, you know, like I feel like a a cemetery is like a no nonsense kind of place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not going to see people skateboarding. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're not going to have cars with loud stare. Yeah, Yeah. I would hope not. Um, so it is that kind of place where you can just kind of go and reflect now I, I like i don't have um like any of my family uh they're not buried nearby here you know so i've i'm i've never gone to like i don't go to the cemetery like for people that i know although i have one co-worker who passed away and uh i go there i go to his gravesite every year and i have found myself at first i was like well what am i doing like i felt like this is what you're supposed to do right like you're supposed to go there but over the past few years you know you just kind of go there and and more than just talking to that person or that it is just kind of a place where you can kind of sit there and and um you know just kind of um maybe cleanse a little bit i don't know if that's the right word but just uh you know reset and and just kind of think about think about things now i used to have a friend when i was younger that would do um rubbings yeah. Uh, of, of gravestones. You know, I think that was before we had cell phone cameras. I think that <laughs> now people just take pictures. Of I own a couple. But... Believe it or not, I've done that. If you could believe have you? it. Have you? Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I used to go out with this uh, girl uh, named Nancy. And when we were in, when I just got out of high school and I was, uh, um, we were hanging out a lot and she was really into that. And so we would get a certain type of paper and some charcoal and it's mm-hmm. funny. So it's, it's funny you should mention this because I hadn't thought about this memory for so long. Not to interject into your story, but just that it oh. just it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, Nancy lives out uh, in a place called Hurricane Creek, uh, and she lives out in the sticks of it. If you fall, it, the road goes right along this old creek. That's where Hurricane gets its name. The town I live in, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was showing me one time. She goes, "Listen, we're gonna get these. We're gonna get rubbings of these headstones over here." And I, when I looked at where they were at, the, I guess the creek had shifted at some point in the last eighteen kabillion years, and so the creek had went th- directly through a very small cemetery, and several of the graves were pr- almost, for all intents and purposes, in the creek. And so we went out mm. and got. Uh, it took rubbings of these uh, of these things, and I had boy, I had. Uh, uh, these uh, one of these things on my wall for years and years and years, and then one day I needed a frame, and I thought, man, it's kind of <laughs> creepy to have this unknown guy's grave on my wall for the last 15, 20 years. And so I finally, and I wish I hadn't done this, but I took the rubbing out, tossed yeah. it. I mean, I may have stuffed it in something. So for God only knows if uh-huh. you've seen this menagerie, 
uh, but I needed to frame or something. But yeah, this these graves were stuck right in the middle of a creek, a moving creek. Probably not long for this world, and then well, I was like, it matters. Uh, but it's it's funny. <laughs> it, that's we that's the only time I think I ever did it. You know, but she was a real proponent. Yeah. She had a she had a big portfolio of. And I always asked her like, what makes you do these? Which ones do you pick? And she just. She didn't say they were telling her to do it. She just would just draw on the one, and she would do it, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I um uh, my town is um yeah, roughly a hundred years old, and it was mostly founded by um, Czechoslovakians. So a lot of the streets have um, Czech names, and a, and a lot of the businesses had Czech names. And um, uh, it's it's interesting when you go to the cemetery and you'll see a person's name and like. Like, um, uh, there, there'll be like somebody Crowdhill, and I had a friend who lived on Crowdhill Street, and you go, Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it kind of adds this personal connection, uh, to, um, to the place where you are. So, I always kind of like that aspect of it. You know, I don't think I've ever asked you about this, I don't know if we've ever discussed it either. Have you ever been involved with much, uh, ghost hunting or? milling around spooky type stuff in the cemetery or i mean have you have you or your wife or both of you is that in your all's wheelhouse not really too much i know that um when we were uh, there, there's a very very famous haunted cemetery in the chicago area uh, called bachelor's grove and my grandma's house is about 10 miles from bachelor's grove and so uh, we went there one time, uh, and uh, you know, it was around dusk, I would say. And um, you know, we didn't we didn't see anything you know strange or anything like that. But uh, the, the problem is in areas like that, it's uh, you know, one thing that, that my dad used to always say about like hanging out in cemeteries and stuff. He would say, "I'm always a, a lot more afraid of the living than the dead." You know, so yeah. places like that, you know, you, you um, especially if it's a, a well-known kind of place. So I never have done it. I there are parts of it that I think are are super interesting and that I would be interested uh, in doing. And then there's some parts of it like, uh, you know, in some of these shows, like the one thing that I really don't get, like the uh, I've seen iPhone apps that supposedly will say like random phrases based off of a thing, and I think yeah. I mean, as a programmer, I go, eh, I don't know how, how well something like that would work. Well, know? yeah, it's tree, tree has a bunch of those. You know, it's, I have, I'm not bragging when I say this, but it's just a fact. I've stomped around in many graveyards uh, over the years. Uh, before, me and, when I, I was into, like, uh, I was drawn to, like, the supernatural uh, when I was younger. And I, I'm like you. I grew up, it was... You know, it was Nimoy stuff, and then it was the books and Time Life stuff, and then, you know, go to the library, check stuff. And I was always into it. And then when I got old enough to have a car and drive around, I was into it. But when I moved to Kentucky, I really sort of went through a phase where I was just uh, crazy about it. I, my buddy Larry and me used to go and stomp around in graveyards and, and, uh, and um, all sorts of spooky places that were supposed to be haunted. And it was a, it was a thrill. You know, and then when I mm. met Teresa, you know, she was big time into it. And so she was, she got me going into the prisons, the uh, uh, the houses, the uh, big estates, the museums. Uh, the, we've been all we've investigated a whole bunch of different places over the years. You know, uh, but graveyards to me were sort of a spooky thing to do when you had nowhere else to go and you just want to do something that was kind of exhilarating. But Teresa actually uh, has a uh, She's been featured in a couple of different things. She's a, she's sort of like a, a semi pro expert on various headstones and what they mean. They mean stuff, mm. which I had no idea what they meant, and the, some of the inscriptions mean stuff. Uh, and so, depending on the age of the cemetery you're at, you know, I guess the older stuff means. So I guess modern stuff, not so much. I mean, when you can get married, when you can get buried in a Pac Man machine or something that looks like a NASCAR or whatever, you've kind of like we've left the building on this stuff now. But, you know, there was a time where it, it was it meant more. I'm not sure if death well, meant less than it does now. <laughs> Just to me, yeah, it seems that I think way. A, I think a lot of them mean don't dig here. 
Yeah. Um, so uh, I saw in the chat someone mentioned uh, Find a Grave, uh, which I'd like to talk about. And before yeah. we talk about that, I see uh, we've had uh, someone else enter our spiritual realm here. It looks like the uh, Mr. John Bodokar Schaller has entered oh. the house. So i like to toss the question to Mr. Bodokar. Uh, are you about... familiar with Find a Grave? And have you ever used that to go find someone's grave uh, to go look at? First of all, can you? I want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, I've never used Find a Grave. Is it findagrave.com? Because that's a killer yep. URL. Yes. Um, yeah. You could go there and type in any, like anybody that's registered, like a famous person or somebody, and it will tell you, and it will give you the GPS uh, coordinates of a, a grave site at a cemetery. So you can literally go to a cemetery. I will tell you that uh, my wife and I, uh, my, my wife loves doing this. Like we will go, uh, you know, we'll be on a road trip and she'll go, oh my gosh, we got to go. Like recently we went on a, we were in, um, we were in Las Vegas and actually we stopped at a, 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 a Kevin Mitnick's grave and we went to go see his grave and Susan pulled up, find a grave to see if anybody else was there. And she said, oh, get ready for this. And so we walked across the cemetery. We're walking, walking. And uh, all of a sudden, I see a small little plot, and on top of it was a uh, a liquor bottle mm. and uh, something else. And then we get there, and it was Red Fox. So oh my God! <laughs> hey, no, man. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth finally took him home right there. Man, it's amazing to me that Kevin Mitnick has passed. He uh, that blows mm -hmm. my. I know he. And when he died, it was unbelievable. And it's still, uh, it's unbelievable to me. But we were talking about. Cemetery. Well, I, I, oh, I was going to answer Flack's question. If I it's apologize. Okay with you. Get, on, get into it. I've, I've never. And this probably speaks volumes to the, my, the quality of my character. I've never once wondered where any of my relatives are buried, like my mm -hmm. great great grandfather or anything like that. Um, all of my immediate family, well, uh, is buried in uh, St. Patrick's uh, Catholic Cemetery. Over across the tracks in Scott Depot, oh. um, uh, and so whenever I want to see most of my family, they're over there that have died, uh, you know, uh, recently. Um, but uh, the, there is an old Schaller family cemetery, and it's on the grounds of Camp Crescendo, which is a which we got turned into a band camp. The Schaller family farm was sold and was turned into a band camp. But the original Schaller family cemetery is still on the grounds. Very neat. So, you know, uh, I'm like you. I, I've never, I don't go see my family, but when we went on vacation to Los Angeles, we used to find a grave and looked up where all the three stooges were buried. So that's, <laughs> that's yeah. where my priorities now, are. <laughs> I have been to see two uh, famous people's graves before in my life that I can think of. Um, when I lived in England, I went to go see the grave of Nick Drake, who is a... Uh, 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 sort of famous singer songwriter from the sixties. Uh, and he's buried in just like a, like a regular old grave in like a regular old village in England. Uh, I was expecting it to look like Jim Morrison's grave, you know, with like the mm. graffiti and all that stuff. Um, Is this somebody that, that you're a fan of? Like you, yeah, yeah. Like I was a huge, Nick, yeah. yeah, I was a huge Nick Drake guy. I still am. I love Nick Drake. Um, mm. and my buddy that I worked at Apple with, he was a Nick Drake fan too. And uh, there was a Nick Drake tribute concert uh, that was going on. And uh, and so we drove out to that. And I can't remember if the tribute concert was in his village where he grew up. I want to say it was, because otherwise, why would we be there? So sure. my, my, my thinking is that we're like, yeah, and then after the concert, we'll go out and we'll go see his grave. And so uh, we went to the, the tribute concert, and then we went to his grave. And yeah, I mean, it was very very humble you know just in a churchyard just there with the rest of them um and then the other one that i went to go see this is just last year when i was back in the uk in november was almost a year ago uh exactly from now to see the gravesite of J.R.R. tolkien oh who's yeah who's oh, yeah. buried very good uh in in oxford and so um and so i went over there and i uh, and again i was expecting like you know, life-size statue of, uh, of Frodo Baggins, you know, to, to, to mark the grave. And uh, it wasn't. It was he's buried right next to two people that you have no idea who they are, you know. And he he does have a plot. Him and his wife share a plot. 
and in in this particular cemetery there's like a every plot is like the headstone and then where the the I, I assume the caskets are there's like a little garden plot and so other people have you know flowers and things like that and of course it being Tolkien people had left you know little notes and remembrances and and things like that so there were drawings of hobbits and things like that so it was it was definitely more than Nick Drake but it still was less than I was expecting in my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, we went uh, uh, recently. We were, we were down in uh, southeast Oklahoma in Hugo, uh, and Hugo is home to. Uh, it's called the uh, Mount Olivier uh, Cemetery, but so it's a very, very, very unique uh, location because for whatever reason, uh, back when uh, the circuses would travel. Uh, when, uh, when they were done traveling, so all, you know, all the, uh, like, uh, uh, Barnum and Bailey and all these things, uh, all the circus performers in the off season would all go for some reason to this town in Hugo, Oklahoma. And then when they passed away, that's where they were buried. So they have, um, the, uh, uh, it's like the circus, I think they call it the, um, uh circus cemetery it literally is what they call it and uh so you can walk around there and it'll just say like uh because i was taking it because it said like you know so so it had the name and then it said tightrope walker and i was like oh did he did he fall like did that you know but then we were like oh no it's all you know as we were looking more and more uh but but there are you know and it has a lot of them have uh like like pictures engravings on the tombstones like there's elephant trainers and and performers and and um uh, ring masters and just all these people uh and, and really what it made me want to do is retire in hugo oklahoma i thought what a great <laughs> town <laughs> that would have been you know to just walk into the store and you know see the bearded lady or just people hanging out in town i thought that sounded like a lot of fun you know but before we go to break uh since we, you popped in here bode uh, we were talking about the uh, unusual hobby or pastime or whatever of just hanging out or or walking or contemplating things in a cemetery. Is this something you that you uh, have ever practiced? Do you, just, do you ever just go out and take a walk in a cemetery or? Oh yeah, I, I you know the, I I love cemeteries. Um, I've been up to Spring Hill Cemetery. You know where that is up oh, in Charleston? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I went up there with Eep and I was like, we're going to have a, a nice little stroll around this cemetery. It's got the steepest hills of any place you can possibly yeah. imagine. That's the whole thing is on the side roll. of a mountain. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and so uh, we've been up there, uh, the, the cemetery that is close to, uh, where I live, you know, when you're coming down main street there on the right. Um, sometimes I'll go over there and walk around. I, one of my, one of my buddies from high school is buried there. But the thing that I remember most is in Boy Scouts. You know, Boy Scouts over at the uh, at First Baptist behind the church, there's a graveyard. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. Okay. And and after Boy Scouts, we used to go back there and play hide and seek among the gravestones. Yeah. Really? And, uh, which I'm I'm pretty sure is, is is sacrilegious on a number of levels. But of course, with your boys, you're like, man, playing hide and seek in a graveyard is about the coolest thing you can possibly imagine. Yeah. It's funny when you get older, like. I, the last, I, I'm not a big fan of the cemeteries these days. It seems like every time yeah. I go there, it's not a good thing. It's never a good thing, actually. And it, the also, older we get, the harder we try to stay out. That's of them. right. It's it, right. It, the last right. thing I need to be it, it, reminded of is my ultimate mortality, my fear of dying. So, and on that happy note, everybody, we're gonna take our first break. We'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. For some more scary stuff. Conversations from the dark side. Hang with us. You are experiencing Conversations from the Dark Side. And we are back uh, with more Conversations from the Dark Side. It's myself, Amigo Aaron, everyone's favorite uh, superstar podcaster, Rob Flack O'Hara, and the King Dong of the Amigos. It's John Bodokar Schaller. Um, beyond the grave there it is i hope not jesus who's gonna do all the back <laughs> back end for me so uh you know i've had enough cemetery talk for a while now i'm getting scared uh, uh don't want to do, get on that road anymore so flack what give us another one of the uh fateful frightful tales 
from your bag of fright. You know, this this is um, a story that made the rounds a couple of years ago, and it's just kind of uh, got some notoriety again over the past year or two. Uh, Netflix made a, a documentary, or not a documentary, but a mini series based on this story. But this is the story of The Watcher. Now, The Watcher, uh, this is a, a lot of ghost stories. Uh, this isn't a ghost story necessarily, but but like true crime and horror stories. It's always these old stories, you know, like this happened in the 70s. And, this, and I think a lot of it is because it seems like things like this should be easy to solve, like in modern day stuff, right? But this is still a bit of a mystery. So let me set this, this story up for you. Uh, this started in 2014. Uh, this uh, uh, husband and wife named Derek and Maria brought us. Uh, they purchased a house, and this address is very famous now. It's 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. Now, this is a, uh, it looks like a big, giant mansion. It's also a, in a historical part of town so um you know it's one of those areas where you have to you know you have to go get it approved if you're gonna what kind of work you're gonna do on your house if you're gonna change the shingles all that kind of stuff uh, but they wanted to fix the house up before they moved into it and so derek was working full time and so maria uh, was going to the house and doing work and one day uh she received a letter in the mail and uh this letter was extremely um creepy i mean i think that's really the best best term for it um it uh, said that uh the person who wrote the letter is the third generation of his family who has been watching over the house uh, that they've been watching this house and it refers to the house like 657 boulevard almost as a name it says i've been watching 657 Boulevard. Um, it uh, there were things in the letter saying uh, asking them uh, why they haven't moved in yet, and uh, asking them if they were aware of uh, what was hiding in the walls and things like that. So, uh, you know, nothing. Yeah, I mean, nothing. Uh, um, you know, directly threatening, but a lot of creepy kind of stuff and uh, enough to let the people know that they were watching the house like physically whoever wrote this could see them right could see other uh, people uh you know coming and going and and kind of described them and um uh, one of the things is it referred to their children as young bloods um which was a little bit disturbing <laughs> to yeah. maria um the uh, uh broadest family they contacted the previous owner of the house and said, uh, did you ever get any letters like this? And they said, oh, yeah, we, we got at least one. But, uh, you know, we just threw them away. We just thought it was a prank. And, and um, uh, we read it, and it seemed creepy. And we we tossed it away, and nothing happened. So they, they weren't really too happy that they'd bought this house and known that somebody had been writing uh, letters to the owner of this house for, uh, you know, quite some time. So um, this is an excerpt from uh i believe this is the the first letter uh it says it has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house have you found all the secrets it holds yet will the young bloods play in the basement or are they too afraid to go down there alone i would be very afraid if i were them it's far away from the rest of the house if you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Oh, jeez. Okay. These are the kind of letters. <laughs> and these letters are all signed a watcher. Okay. So, um, unsurprisingly, they didn't move into the house. Yeah. <laughs> they, they keep working on the house, right? So, after two years of, of owning it, they went to, uh, like, a, a city council kind of meeting, and they said... Uh, we want to tear the house down. Uh, the city council vetoed it. They said, no, this is a historic site. Oh. You can't tear the house down. Did they show them the um, note? <clears throat> <laughs> yes, and they mentioned the note. Um, so, yeah, their, their request to tear the house down was vetoed. Um, and so they, uh, um, they ended up just renting the house out to someone else. 
Um, but then the renters started getting letters. And this is from a letter that the renters uh, got. It said, um, maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. Jeez. So, <laughs> so, when they started referring to the children as young bloods <laughs> and, and mentioning the children by name in the letters, uh, not only did they go to the city council, they went to the local police and they said, uh, this is, this is creepy, right? Uh, and as the letters escalated and, and, uh, perceived threats by the watcher, uh, increased the FBI eventually got involved. Now, part of the problem with this story isn't that there were no suspects is that there are so many suspects. <laughs> That everybody, it's like playing Clue. Everybody is kind of a suspect, right? Uh, there's a next door neighbor who had lived there since the 60s and had complained about things about the house. And so they said, oh, this is this has got to be, this has got to be the guy, right? It was this old man. It's got to be the guy. Uh, then they found a younger uh, a person, I don't know, maybe a young adult. Uh, who lived nearby, who's online, he was an online gamer, and his online gamer alias, his handle, was The Watcher. So they were like, oh, this is definitely him, right? Um, then uh, there was even a thing where the neighbor's sister was uh, a real estate agent, and they thought maybe uh, uh, maybe that he had written it before her, right? So there are all these different angles. And the FBI took the letter and they said they were able to get DNA off of the letter and the DNA was female, which ruled out all these people. <laughs> <laughs> they also did all the letters were uh, written by hand. And so they're all handwritten. And so they took handwriting analysis from all these people and none of it matched. So all these people have been ruled out uh, as, as potential subjects. And even at one point, uh, Maria... Well, actually, the uh, not Maria, but um, uh, her husband, Derek, was accused of writing the letters because it turned out that years earlier, he'd had problems with a neighbor and had written anonymous letters and sent them. So it's like there's so many oh potential suspects in this case. Um, and so Maria and Derek uh, teamed up together and they hired a former... Uh, FBI um, agent said, we want you to not only clear our name, but find out who it is. Nobody has ever solved this case. The police, the FBI, this FBI agent, a private investigator uh, that has that has been uh, hired. Nobody has ever figured out who was writing the letters. Now, uh, Maria and Derek sold the house. Uh, one of the things almost, you, maybe you could take this as a um, uh, Amityville horror angle that uh, there were some accusations that maybe they couldn't afford the house, so they were writing the letters to try to get out of a deal, but that <laughs> was never proven. But they, they ended up selling uh, the house, and the new owners, I believe, said that they got a letter, but that was it. Uh, so it, it's kind of stopped. You know, once, the F once you hear that the FBI is doing DNA profiling and they're in your neighborhood, that's probably a good time to stop, you know? So, uh, so I, I think it's... It's tailored off uh, since then. Now, Netflix did do uh, a season of a show based on The Watcher. I think it's it's called The Watcher, I think. Um, and they've changed some of the details. You know, I mean, not just the names, but they 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 changed, like, the, the family only has two kids instead of three. This is, and, and the thing is, they kind of combine some suspects and stuff. So it's... it's if you're into this kind of thing and you, and you want to be uh, a little bit creeped out at night, go read the real stuff about this case. Cause I think that's better than the, uh, the Netflix one. Um, but uh, there's a lot going on and I, I got to say, and this is what I would toss to you guys. Uh, I mean, is there anything creepier than like getting a note? I got an anonymous note from someone that you, you realize has been watching you. I mean, it's a very invasive kind of feeling. 
I would. It's amazing that they sold got this place. It's a lot like the Amityville house. Like, how does this thing stay mm. on the market? Like, who's who's buying this stuff? Uh, this would. I mean, if you've got kids, uh, and you get a note like this, I mean, or young bloods, you could call them young. Well, bloods. you could call them that if you're talking about creepo. <laughs> But if, if, like, as a, someone who's got a bunch of kids, like, well, not a, has a kid. I feel like I got a bunch of kids. <laughs> I mean, don't tell anybody. Uh, maybe I shouldn't release this now. But someone who's got a kid, like, I would just not move in there. I mean, that would be enough for me to go. The fact that mm -hmm. they just kept the ball, especially if the neighbor, if the person you bought it from was like, oh, yeah, we got some of those. I'd be like, no. Right. And <laughs> when, no. Well, that was the I'm problem out. is that. Yeah, they after they didn't get the letters until they had bought the house, and then they didn't move in there. So now they own this gigantic house that they were too afraid to move into. Didn't we cover a story a couple of years ago where these people found a guy living in the house, like uh, like in a like in a hidden room? And I, this happens. I've seen many. Uh, I've seen many tales mm -hmm. of people that are, have like like slid in the little spots in the attic or whatever. I mean, you don't know there could be someone live physically living there. You know, mm -hmm. who's that's how they get all your information. And they can at any point sneak down and just cut throats. Or they could be living in the backyard or God knows where. I'd be out, personally. What about you, Bo? Yeah. Well, I'm not fully convinced there isn't somebody living in my attic. Like, <laughs> I've had... I'll just be laying in bed at night. And I'll hear, like, footsteps and stuff up there. Like, somebody moving around, walking around. Really? And, like, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know if it's, like, you know, I asked my dad one time, and he's just, like, it's just the house settling. Oh, yeah, that's dick. Yeah, that's dick. You know, that's a lie. Oh, well. And so, you know, I've gone up there, and they there's, a, there's this old stove up there, but it's this kid's stove. It's like one of those like wooden stoves that you'd give a kid oh, back in the fifties. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't see anybody up there. I just saw that that there could be human stove. remains in it. Yeah, I didn't look in the stove because that would cause me to actually like step into the attic and not just be on the ladder. You know, like I've got a line that I don't cross. If it was a stove costume, it was yeah, <laughs> wow. stove costume. because a master of disguise. You know, boat. Now listen, I don't want to cast aspersions on your character, your good name. But you strike me as the kind of person that could be uh, sort of timid in the face of this, sort, like the paranormal. Would well, that be accurate? Well, here's what I tell myself. Yeah. Because, some, you know, whenever I get scared, I say, okay, I've been living in this house since 2013, okay? If there's a dude up there <laughs> moving around, you know, he hasn't bothered me. I've not really bothered <laughs> him. We're just going to continue to coexist peacefully. <laughs> See, that's, I, yeah, but he hasn't bothered you yet. Well, that's true. You know what I, I mean? mean? It could be it could be tonight. Yeah. Well, my uh, my my wife and I we we often joke uh like like we'll um oh I, I joke with her about like getting a, a pool cabana boy you know uh, but as like as long as he as long as he cleans the pool that's all I care about you know and and or Susan will say like you can hire uh, you know a, a little um, a cute maid you know in a little maid costume but as long as she does laundry she doesn't care like that's all our thing right so I feel <laughs> like if I were to find someone living in my attic I would just leave notes like you know please feed the cats we'll be gone this weekend or whatever you know just like if you just do your part you can live in the attic i'm okay with listen that. aren't now, you the guy that had a secret room in his house that someone could have been living in i did okay I did. well i don't know but it would be pretty small to live in but it could happen yeah i'm just saying now, aaron i want to ask you about the time when people were trying to bust into the mountain you know, it, yeah. it, it, at any of those points, you know, where you heard people outside making strange noises or trying to get in, at no point did you think, hey, I'm just pulling up stakes and I'm moving back with mom and dad. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was mom and dad's house. So, I mean, technically. Well, moving back with mom and dad uh, where they currently reside. It's, fun it's funny you should mention that because it's, it's funny. In the YouTube chats, my old old uh, partner in crime, Leroy, who spent many a night up on the mountain. And, of course, the mountain, the house on Mud Mountain was at a weird spot. It was in the woods, and the woods and the house were directly beside the interstate. So it was it was both incredibly quiet and loud all at once. It was very strange. <laughs> and you would hear stuff all the time up there. And Larry, Larry could vouch for that. He, he, and Larry, I will say, God bless him. I love Larry, but he's, he's, a, he's an amazing coward. I mean, he's like uh, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. I mean, I've been 
ghost hunting with him, and he'll literally sprint to the car and lock the door. <laughs> like he, he, so when when who's uh, a bigger weenie, Larry or the Chud? Oh, Larry, because the, the Chud has a, is a kind of a creepy guy in a weird way. Larry is uh, <laughs> Larry. Larry's an actual. I mean, like I mean, he just when it kind of happens, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, and he stayed up there and heard stuff. But you do hear stuff up there. Now, the funny thing about Mud Mountain is it could be ghosts, it could be animals, or it could be people trying to kill you. Like, for real, because you were in a bad part of town, too. That's another thing about it. So, eventually, once the house got broken into one time while I was at work, and we screwed the air conditioning in so they couldn't push it back through the door, I mean, there was no one that could physically get into that house Short of, I don't know, maybe come in through the roof or break a second story window, get a ladder. But I mean, it was a thick block house with a door that I mean, I know personally, having been locked out of my house three times, I couldn't knock it down, and I'm me, you know. So it was impenetrable. So once I once I knew it was impenetrable, I was okay. But up to that point, I was not okay, and I would hear weird stuff knocking around out there. You know, but you never know what it is. I mean, animals, If uh, uh, you'd be surprised that the tiniest bird can sound like a corpse shambling through the woods because it doesn't <laughs> take that much to make noise, you know. And, and especially when you've got coyotes and stuff that are running around, you, you just never know what you're going to hear up there. Uh, but, yeah, I, well, I'm not going to sit here and say I wasn't very uh, scared because I was scared quite often, actually, <laughs> up there. But you get you do get used to it after a while. Uh, but I would not get used to having someone creepy live in my house that may kill me because they're sending me creepy letters. That's where I'll draw the yeah, line. Well, I've learned with, um, you know, we have the, my, my workshop and we converted part of it to the movie room, right? But, yeah. but it's separate from the house. I mean, it's not far. Like, I can see it's all paved between there and the house. I mean, it is not, not a far distance, you know. Um, but I have learned not to go out there and watch scary movies late at night. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. for, I mean, no one, there's like no way my backyard would be so inconvenient for a killer to get into. Like Bigfoot or a murderer. Like there's no reason they would ever like get into my backyard in the first place. But I will tell you, I have walked out of that. And I mean, I do that. I won't run, but I do that stupid fast walk. You know, it's almost like a <laughs> shuffle where you, do, 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 you know, and I kind of yep. look over my shoulder because, you know, Freddy Krueger might be <laughs> I do that from the, the arcade corner. of the house. It's the same thing. Now, let me ask you both, because we're all getting older, you know. Uh, some of us quicker than others. But I'll ask you first, Bo, then I'm going to hear you. Find, or do you find yourself, do you think stuff creeps you out more now than it did when you were younger or vice versa? No, definitely less now than it did when I was When I, I was fearful of everything as a child. Mm hmm yeah, I think I've related to you about how even the theme for the professional wrestling that came on on Saturday morning scared me as a child. Yeah, um, it's pretty. I, I was scared of most things. Um, yeah, or even in high school, like the first time when Blair Witch came out, and one of my friends came over and she told me about the movie. I didn't sleep that night because I was so scared from her description of the movie. Yeah, oh, so watch it. It would have really blown your mind. Oh, I know. I did watch it later, and then I was also freaked out. Yeah. Um, and so um, I, these days, uh, I don't get scared because I'm not, I guess, listen, I mean, I guess I'm just going to be real. I, I think a lot about my mortality because I'm a teacher, and teachers and kids get shot all the time in schools. Oh, yeah. So I'm more I'm more uh, in tune with the, the the fact that my life may end any day. So things like, you know, random guy living upstairs, they don't freak me out as they as much as they used to. Mm. What about you, Flag? Um, you know, what's, what's changed for me is what scares me. You know, like, uh, of course, when, when I was younger, you know, boy, I'm, I mean, um, I, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Unsolved Mysteries, but, you know, I mean. I, I hate that theme. I, that theme used to scare me, too. <laughs> I used to be laying in bed, and I'd hear that come on. And I would just, I would freeze. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. people wrote into the show back when we first talked about that show, and about and that theme scared the hell out of them. It's, yeah. I don't know yeah. why. It's just some syntho crap, but man, it scares people to death. Go ahead, Flag. <laughs> people hate it. Well, but, but you know, I'd watch like I'd watch an episode of Bigfoot, you know, and then I'd lay in bed and think like, oh, I bet Bigfoot's. Like a Bigfoot would have to like walk down Route sixty six and then turn into my neighborhood to get. 
<laughs> to my house. Like Bigfoot's not coming to where I live. There's no UFOs, you know. But but as a kid, that's what scared me. I was scared of aliens. I was scared of Bigfoot. I was scared of, you know, um, uh, chupacabras. I like silly stuff. I'm I'm not scared of that stuff today. I, you know, we've talked about on I think last year. You know, we talked about ghosts. I said, if I ever saw a ghost, I would run towards it. I would be like, what is that? Like, I would have to know what that is. Like, I'm not scared of that stuff. What I'm scared of is people. You know, that's what scares me today. Not the the supernatural stuff makes me uh, curious and, and interested and stuff like that. But it, but it's the, that's that's what scares me more now. I'm, I'm way more uh, worried about somebody trying to get into my home than Bigfoot. Have you ever, do you, and, and I'll ask both, I want to hear both this from you, because I mean, I think this will change, maybe change the tune. Have you ever had something that you would consider a genuine paranormal event happen to you? I don't mean Absolutely. UFOs per se, but it's like a, a, you saw a you, what, what you What happened to you, Boat? I was in eighth grade, and I was in Miss Hall's class. Okay. Okay. I knew Miss Hall. And we were writing in our journals. And I bit off the tip of my pen. Right? Yeah. And I I mean, I bit off the tip of my pen and I like spit it out. I was just like, oh. And then I was just thinking about, man, I am screwed. Because the ink is going to come out of this. It's going to get all over me. Okay? And then I looked back at my pen and my pen was whole. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I swear, I swear that that happened. I believe you because I've seen your joystick at your house and you've got two marks all over it. <laughs> it looks like you fed it to the dog. So I have no doubt in believing that you stuck a pen in your in your mouth. Oh, I mean that's that's a low that's a low key horrific event. That's a personal yeah. event. Okay, that's good. What about you, uh, Rob? I don't know if we ever went down this road. Have you ever had a genuine thing that you can't explain happen? You know, there was one one thing where, um, and I think we might have talked about this years ago, but I I had a, a friend uh, who told me, you know, I went over to his house and he's and he said this totally nonchalantly. He said, "By the way, um, our house is haunted, and weird stuff happens in here all the time, and uh, so you know, if it does, it, it's it's no big deal." And uh, that night, uh, we were playing video games in the living room, and no one else was in the house. It was just us in the house. And the cabinet like came open in the kitchen, and a thing of spaghetti fell out, like a container of dry spaghetti, you know, fell out, and the spaghetti came out. And th the thing that, that gave me uh, thought, I suppose, is not that it happened. It was his reaction to it where he was just like, oh, yeah, that, that, that stuff happens, you know. And, and it wasn't like, I always thought um, if he was trying to trick me, he would have really played it like, oh, look at that, a ghost, like that sort of thing. But it wasn't that kind of reaction. He was just like, like we were playing, you know, I think in television, he was just like, oh, yeah, that happens, you know. <laughs> and it always, that 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 always kind of stuck with me, you know, like a, just a weird thing that happened, uh, and that there was no explanation for. And and he said, "Yeah, just weird stuff like that happens there." Now, that always kind of bothered me. I think, you know, I and I've mentioned this before, so I'll just briefly re recount it. But I think when you're when you are ha when something like that really strange happens, it's some because everyone you see a werewolf movie. You're walking to your car. A werewolf could get you, but it probably won't because werewolves aren't real, right? But when you <laughs> when something happens, when you experience something that happens that you know happened that you are can't explain, it's it's almost for me anyway. The time it happened to me, it was almost like a, like I like I'd pulled a winning lottery ticket. It was a stunned sort of did that just happen? Did I just that's sort of the way I felt. Uh, mm -hmm. And in my case, again, I, we were investigating uh, at the Whipple Country Store, which was one of the last remaining mining stores that you could tour in West Virginia. It was an old store that used to take script from miners. And me and Tree's dad and some other guy were locked in this closet that used for bookkeeping. And we were all just joking around because it was the men. We were there for the women. The men were just screwing around. And we had a, a light in there, and someone said, okay, if there's a ghost in here, make something happen right now. And the second they said that, 
uh, a book flew off the shelf and the light went out. All right, that was a genuine. I was watching the two guys. They weren't involved. Mm-hmm. This was a thing that happened, and it was probably the one time in my whole life where I was really started. Holy, what is this? What is this? You know. I don't think I was that scared, but I was. Uh, it's to this day, it's a feeling. I don't know if I ever had it again. It's just like I can't believe that just happened. That kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we had something genuinely frightening happen, linked to the paranormal, how we would actually react. You could. You, I'd, I would wait. You know, I'll I tell you. Place. I, I tell you what I think because I think about this all the time. All right. Most of the time, when when I'm having an experience, I think back to uh, an anecdote related to it. That I've heard from Rob Flack O'Hara. Yeah. And one time he said um, that, you know, somebody told him, I think it was maybe it was your dad or your grandfather. He said, if, if, if aliens come or whatever, just walk toward them. Just figure out what's going on. And I'd mm-hmm. like to think that I'd be brave enough that if I see like a ghost or some kind of weird nonsense going down, I, instead of running away, I'd be like, what's it like being a ghost chick? Can you explain your presence? And, like, you know, I, I really want to dig in there and see what was going on. It's easy to say, I'll run at them. But I don't think I'll I'll, run at them, if I'm honest. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I, I'd I, like to think that I would. And there was a time where, when I was out romping and stomping, uh, and it was, I was younger, going through the cemeteries and stuff, I had a lot more, um, I had a lot more bravado. And maybe that's part of it. One thing, I can't believe there was a time where you'd have more bravado than you have now. Well, boy, was there. <laughs> I mean, I had bravado cut out my yin-yang. But, I mean, the, uh, the uh, one thing is you get older, you have the, you're, you're bestowed a gift, and it's the gift of realizing your own mortality. And so if I was standing, let's just say I'm standing in a hallway. Like, for example, we went to uh, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. It's got these long hallways. And so if we saw a light flash or something, we'd be like, oh, look at that. But if I saw like a full body apparition coming down the hall, you know, at me, I could tell you right now, I'd be getting my hiney. You'd, I'd break a fat guy world record for speed as I moved down out of that <laughs> cell area. Because what if that ghost grabbed hold of me and it gave me the business? You know what I'm saying? Well, what if I thing, died of fright? I mean, so. Something that has changed in my my personal point of view is that I used to say if I saw something, and especially in today's world of cell phones, right? Like we all have super, we have um, the camera that's in my pocket all the time is a higher definition than the camera I bought 10 years ago that I paid almost a thousand dollars for, right? Like we, like we all have the highest quality cameras on us at all times. And I used to say if I saw a ghost or a UFO or something like that, I would ca- I would try to capture it, you know what I mean? I don't think that I would anymore, and I'll tell you why. Because if you go to YouTube and say, you know, look for uh, videos of UFOs, there are thousands of videos of UFOs that look 100% real. Yeah. Right? So I, so I don't think there's any point in capturing that because, like, what's the point? You're never going to convince somebody else, right? So the only – if you're in that moment – you have that unique opportunity to convince yourself. Yeah. You know, so I think that that's what's changed for me. Um, you know, like I said, if I, if, uh, like we talked about, like uh, boat was talking, you know, about the ghost or whatever, like you can take, and, and that's the other thing is people always go, well, I saw a ghost and I tried to film it and I just got a bright light. Well, then you just, it's just like going to a concert and you're staring at your phone instead of watching the concert. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, why would you stare at your phone when there's a ghost there? Like I, I'm going to take in that moment try to interact with it, whatever it is. And because at the end of the day, I don't need to convince everybody else that UFOs are real or ghosts are real or, you know, any of these things. I, I want to know for myself. Sure. Right. So I, I think that that's, what's changed for me uh, over time. I, w- I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother trying to film it. Um, I would like to say like you guys, I'm, I'm going to engage with it. In reality. I would just be crying and, and let, you know, pooping. <laughs> just, just more probably closer, you know. You know, uh, I I kind of queried the chat a little bit earlier if they'd had any experiences. And Petzl has an interesting uh, thing here. He says, "I had a near accident in a car where I believe my car passed through the other car, crossing through the intersection." Mm. So that is something bizarre. Uh, if you ponder that, ghost car. 
Uh, you know, it, it, I will say it is not, I, for me. It's not uncommon to have kind of weird feelings or experiences in my car. You ever had anything weird mm-hmm. happening in your car? You know, I feel like your mind starts to be, get into an altered state if you're. I mean, as somebody that drives a lot, Aaron, it, what, do you think that it's possible that you can? You're more prone to um, to uh, have sort of. Uh, visionary experiences or are you more prone to imagine weird stuff going down if you've been on the road all day well i think you've got you may be onto something it's funny i never had occurred to if i'm honest that that you would but i mean yes maybe you are triggered in some way if you think about it uh the hypnot the hypnotic way that the road can capture your attention and kind of lull you which is why people fall asleep i think uh and so i can definitely see that you know, I, but I mean, the thing about going, I mean, let's face facts, you're in a car, you're going at a speed. So when you see something weird on the side of the road, for example, or even sometimes in front of you on the road, uh, it can mess with your head because there's a, there's a, it's amazing how quickly cars move so quickly that you really can't, I mean, I saw a guy doing crash tests at five mile an hour, 10 mile an hour, 20 and 30. And like it, 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 you wouldn't think that's that fast, but it's plenty fast to like free, to like, you know, to it, to sneak up on you. So I, I think you might have something there. I mean, I'm trying to think of all the times I've been driving out in the sticks. I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen anything weird on the road, and I've done you know thousands of miles, at, you know, at work. So what about you, Flack? You you drive a ton. Oh or you used to. yeah. It, yeah, well, yeah, still, you know, we, we, we still put in the miles, you know, and, um, yeah, I think that's the problem is that, uh, our, you know, it's easy for our minds to wander. And then all of a sudden you start thinking, uh, you know, like, oh, did I just imagine something or did I see that, you know, and, and, um, uh, and of course that gets dangerous, obviously when we're, we're driving, um, like that. I know that I did a, uh, uh, extremely long road trip, solo road trip. One time I drove, um, basically I drove, I'm trying to remember the math exactly. I think I drove, uh, 16 hours, slept for four and another 16 hours. I had a really short window of time to get uh, cross country. And, uh, I remember like, by the end, like there were parts of the trip I didn't remember. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like where you just, you feel like, uh, you know, you're just uh, going through the motions. Uh, now, that happens to me know, all so. the time. Yeah, that's ex- yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I just, that's, how, that's how I go through lunch a lot of times. Just I don't know how, how I ended up at that buffet I just got there. But, <laughs> um, you know, the, um, I don't know. I, I, I will say, you know, to, to kind of, I wanted to comment kind of on, on Petzl, uh, one of the people in our, our chat, you know, he said he felt like he had gone through a, a car you know gone through another car like i um if, if you've ever if you've ever been in an accident or something uh like uh, there was a time one time that uh um we we almost got broadsided by a car i mean it was it was um uh, literally a, a, a there was a car that was stolen and we were at a stoplight and it turned green and the car in front of us went and then the guy ran the light so he went in between us and the and the first car right like and um, I mean, it was just just inches that he missed our car and, w- and was just flying through the intersection, you know. And then you start doing this math where you go, if you think about all the things in your day that got you to that moment, you know, like if you'd taken five seconds longer to tie your shoes or, far, or done this or done that or, or um, you know, a little bit longer in the bathroom or you'd walk slower or whatever, like... Like there's so many things that had to line up to get you right at that moment, at that exact second for that thing to happen. And I have had this weird thought like on road trips where I'll start thinking like maybe I should have done something different. Like if, like I have this feeling, you know, sometimes they, you, you do these long drives and, and for it's hard to, I don't know why I feel this, but I feel like something bad might happen. And then I start thinking, well, maybe I should pull over to add time or something. You know what I mean? To delay myself from uh, yeah. whatever this impending feeling. But then you think, well, 
What if you add? What if you pulled over for half an hour and then left and got in an accident? And you think, well, what if I hadn't done that? You know, so maybe maybe if, if something's supposed to happen, it's just supposed to happen. I don't know. And <laughs> Bo, you you also you do a pretty good drive every day. I mean, do you feel like uh, when you're in the car, it's pre it's just day after day normality, or do you ever anything weird happen in there? Yeah, I, you know, I I don't really. I'm constantly surprised. This is, uh, it, you know, I drive literally. I've been at Winfield Middle for twelve, well, almost twelve years now, and I drive the same route every day. I'm surprised at all of the things that I still continue to notice along the way. That that um, you know, you'd think that I've seen everything, but I, you know, I keep an eye out for just you know details about things and stuff like that. But it is odd when you think about the way that your brain can go on autopilot, um, especially when you consider how inherently dangerous driving is. I mean, you're literally split seconds away from ending your life and someone else's life that's coming in the opposite direction mm -hmm. for, you know, hours at a time, you know, if you're on an hours long road trip, yet we all manage to continue to do this and maintain, you know, relative safety. It, it to me that says more about the brain and its normal state than its paranormal state. I mean, we don't have to search for the paranormal to find wacky and wild examples of how the human brain works. Yeah, very good. You know, along those lines, I wanted to, if you guys will indulge me, I wanted to touch on a little bit of feedback for our previous shows just so we could kind of go over a few things. But I also want to mention a couple of things that I'd seen in chat earlier uh, that had been brought up. Uh, my buddy Uncle Larry, a.k.a. Leroy, had mentioned uh, uh, sh punching and kicking at shadow people. Uh, I, shadow people is, a, uh, is a, sometimes explained as, a, as maybe a mental disorder or maybe some, even an optic issue. And, of course, some people think that the shadow people are uh, a legitimate paranormal event or even dimensional. Have you guys ever experienced the phenomenon of shadow people? Yeah, I think I have. Really? I, you know, I, I've, I've definitely seen uh, shadows of what I believe are figures, but I think that this is this is sort of related to whatever the disease, or no, it's really not really a disease, or whatever the condition is where you see faces in everyday objects. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's related to that, where you can see and you can see a shadow of something, and your brain will just slot it into the, that's probably a person category. Now I've never had any um, I've never had any physical interaction like an altercation like you were talking about with Larry, but I've definitely seen something out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, "Wow, that was definitely a person." And then I look again, and I don't see it again. What about you, Flag? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You really, know, um, both of you? Okay. Well, not I mean not like 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 what you said like not where I see a person. And then I look at that person. You know what I mean? Like I don't see somebody walking up to me or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I frequently, you know, we'll see like what, what looks like the, uh, you know, shape of a person or outline of a person. But again, I never got in a, a, a fight, you know, okay. with them per se. Probably but, a uh, good move. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I would I'd, say. I would take my lunch money, one, but you know. <laughs> so uh, just I wanted to because we had some really nice feedback from the previous shows. I kind of want to get your all's opinion on this. Um, we had, when we did the vampire episode, uh, uh, first of the month, we had a bunch of people recommend movies that we didn't talk about, Flack. And one of the movies is a movie uh, called uh, Martin. George Romero's Martin was one. I don't know if anybody's seen that one. Uh, it is uh, one that came up a couple times because I had some people send me some uh, private messages about that episode. Um, anybody, anybody seen that one? No. Another no, one no. we also had the it was also mentioned. Uh, let's see here, Night of the Demon, uh, and Doctor Terror's House of Horrors. So these are all mentioned that have vampires in them, and also so we had another fellow uh, send in um, uh, the Hammer uh, series, which I think we touched on briefly with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. So those are all good ones. Um, another one that was. Uh, sent in uh, was a BBC production. I'm trying to catch the name of it here. Um, oh, it's a BBC production of Nosferatu. 
I don't know if we anybody seen that. It's a more recent. Oh no, it's uh, Dracula. Excuse me. This was uh, Sheila Dixon mentioned that. Yeah, I, I actually I went and I watched that. Oh really? How was it? Well, you know, I'm a fan of the book because the book is not like what you think of when you think of Dracula. At uh -huh. least what I thought you think of. It was very very similar to the book uh which i've heard reading reviews that it's not common to find adaptations of the book or uh that are the it's not common to find dracula movies that uh are that close to the book uh i would recommend it you know it fits right in with all of those great granada sherlock holmes and oh, okay. it's that era of the bbc um i i think i thought it was great this is another one I, uh, several people mentioned this one to me it's called what we do in the shadows i believe that's a uh, that's a, a tv show if yeah. i'm not mistaken yeah. I, I i hear it's good uh so mm -hmm. that one might be one to check out um in line with our dark side of crime episode <laughs> happy coding sent us a an audio or a video from someone named screaming lord such uh who mm -hmm. apparently had a gimmick in the 60s where he would come on shows and sing this Jack the Ripper song he did live uh, on the B on on in Britain, and it was so scary that it would people would faint or run away. And he there's <laughs> actually a video of it. So if you want to look up, and some of our British fans or European fans may know about Screaming Lord Such because apparently this gimmick he ran with forever. Either one of y'all heard of him? No, I would no. love to hear that song. It's I but... listen. It's super spooky. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is, it looks like he's got, uh, remember Paul Revere to Raiders? It's like there mm -hmm. is backing band. And then this guy comes out on stage. It's like, what is this? What is this guy doing? But yeah, that's what, I thought that was one uh, worth mentioning here. Um, we also had a, remember uh, when we did the uh, episode where we talked about the strange brews? I think it was last week. Uh, mm -hmm. We Remember we talked about the toast brewing where they just took old discarded toast? And yes. Looked at Chris Folds went to their brewery. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> he sent a picture over of the brewery, and he he says he's drank it many times. Then he said it's all right, not the best. So there you go. If you if you want to uh, give that one a whirl, uh, Pajaco chimed in and went to get about that vampire. Or no, it was about our uh, Dark Side of Crime episode. Uh, he he when we he heard us talking about Spring Hill Jack, he didn't know much about him until that episode. He says it. He wonders if that's where they got the idea for Freddy Krueger. Interesting take uh, on yeah. that. I believe that. Uh, uh, I believe I've heard that part of the the uh, part of the reason that Freddy Krueger came around was because of a newspaper article that people mm -hmm. were having nightmares in this desert or something like that, and it was it, it, it were dying from. Do you hear this? Yeah. Mess with you, flag. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, uh, I believe the article, what it had to do was, uh, yeah, people that were just having nightmares that were so bad that they would were refusing to go to sleep and that someone had died basically from lack of sleep, from staying awake for so long. And so that was, uh, uh, he, he just began um, trying to come up with, like, what would be so terrible in a nightmare uh, that would make you, you know, not want to go to sleep. So that was, that was part of... Uh, uh, the lore behind Nightmare on Elm Street. I will say, Spring Hill Jack's gimmick with the with the uh, claws or whatever, that's pretty yeah. scary. It's nightmare fuel. Uh, you know, okay. after some of these shows, like, like I've tried to take some of the things we've talked about and implement them, you know, because it is a Halloween season. So I did try to come up with some uh, boots that would allow me to jump nine feet high and possibly uh, shoot <laughs> flames, but that didn't go well. And so instead what I did was uh, just put some moldy bread in water and serve that to my wife uh, unbeknownstly. <laughs> and um, you should so have scraped some of your DNA over. out of your chair, you know, and, it, and it, <laughs> you could have flacken, flacken Hauser or whatever it could be your some brew. DNA. I just put some, some uh, Q tip swabs and stuck it down in a Bud Light and had her drink it. So, um, you know, uh, and told her it was from Ronald Dow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pajaco, he's quite a sleuth. Bo, you know this. Uh, oh he, yeah. When we mentioned uh, uh, BS or not from Amazon Woman of the Moon was was Jack the Ripper in fact the Loch Ness monster? He mentioned that uh, they mentioned in the in the short that these things happened on London's West End, but Whitechapel's on the East End. Then he said he saw the same thing in an episode of Babylon Five. So he's really paying attention to, 
this stuff. That always blows my mind. Uh, he also, uh, oh, go ahead, vote. I, I think it's a lot like how people from Chicago always point out, like the 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 night Chicago died by paper lace. Yeah. Where it starts out talking about the east side of Chicago, but there is no east side of Chicago because that's where the lake is. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There's also that song is a, a myriad of, of stupidity in it. If you listen to it. Uh, Pajaco also asked about um, haunted dolls. I don't know how much we got into those a little bit. We were talking about TV shows, I believe, or TV movies. Uh, and he's even got, but what he's linked up here are some Etsy listings as someone is ha- is is selling real haunted dolls. They need loving. It says needs a loving. Real haunted dolls. You know, what do we think about the yeah. uh, haunted dolls, fellas? Well, I'm just going to say that might be, we might need to shelve uh, that idea and do a, a long, not, not now, but do a, I'd like to do maybe a longer episode about haunted things that get sold because that seems to be, that was a big trend yeah. for a while. Like I think that deserves its eBay. own episode for yeah. sure. I yeah. like that idea. Yes. Good idea. We could, it's, a, it's a little bit of the old uh, Curious Goods, AK Friday 13th the series, uh, selling and a first I, I think before we do that, we should both buy one and see how well, it goes. Let me tell you something. <laughs> When I went and saw that stupid Annabelle film, they got my money. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> Dave just mentioned that in the chat. The zero percent chance of that, Dave. Um, so I want to uh, take a quick break here. We're getting very, we're getting really down uh, down to our last uh, quarter here. When we come back, we're gonna maybe lighten the mood a little bit and talk about something I just got, discovered today, which is. Uh, paranormal activity in the news it's halloween and so you know this is where the paranormal gets gets to jumping uh, we're going to cover that and get the boys thoughts on that in two minutes and two seconds this is conversations from the dark side you are experiencing conversations from the dark side hmm. all right we are in the Home stretch, the final segment of the final episode for 2024. Conversations with Dark Side. Hey, just before we get in this last segment, a quick thank you to everybody who has participated this year. Uh, whether you've left comments on our YouTube uh, channel or, or have sent stuff in on Discord, uh, we definitely appreciate all your input and people that showed up here in chat. We appreciate you. Hope you had a good time and hope this has uh, sort of bent you towards the proper Halloween spirit. And along those lines, I was nosing around. You're going to love this boat. I got tipped off on this one. Uh, Someone told me that, hey, do you know Newsweek? Newsweek, everybody knows about Newsweek. They've got a paranormal news section. It's updated regularly. I was (laughs) like, holy smokes. I got to get into this. And so what I've got here in front of me, just a few of these news stories I thought we'd discuss before we get into a little more uh, Halloween talk, is some paranormal news. Now, one would think that this season uh, of uh, the ghosts and the ghouls, that the stories would be more based on actual ghost stories, but they've got some of the stupidest crap here. Uh, <laughs> just to lead the dance, this one hits a little close to home for me. I'm not going to lie. Uh, mom, comma, grandma, so mom and grandma, Blame ghosts after toddlers test positive for fentanyl. Fentanyl, the ghost. <laughs> this was ghost related, apparently. Um, according to the site here, two women in Newton, North Carolina, are facing criminal charge after being accused of causing se- a severe injury to two toddlers. Uh, their defense uh, is that the ghosts were involved. Uh, they said that a one- and two-year-old suffered multiple injuries, including burns, bite marks, and broken bones. These kids really got hosed. Uh, the, when questioned, the women reported that the injuries were the results of evil spirits within their apartment in sh- about 40 miles north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, thankfully, the kids are going to be fine, uh, but uh, the, uh, the people doesn't look like they're believing this ghost tale. You know, if you think about it, this is horrible, by the way. Nobody wants their kids. Trust me, I've seen people exposed to fentanyl. Bad times, bad times, especially little kids. Uh, but what do you think about the possibility? I mean, this, if ghosts exist, do you think they would do anything that heinous? I mean, it's, 
<laughs> that's not a good that's not a good stance for your for your court case well I don't think. okay let's let's say you're an evil ghost okay okay yeah to, to me the better move i mean if you if you have ghostly powers would be to um to sort of uh possess another person to do your bidding because then nobody suspects that it's the ghost it's always it's the other person you can get away with a lot more if you do your dastardly deeds through demonic possession rather than the the demon itself making itself corporeal and then doing some weird junk mm. black you know i'm just thinking like um we're just not alive on this earth for very long i mean in the big picture right and then yeah. we're gonna pass away we're gonna die hopefully there's some afterlife waiting for us and and i hope that my you know existence in that afterlife is not to return to earth as a second-rate drug dealer yeah <laughs> i feel like like that's bad karma like you've done something really wrong when saint peter is like well let me check my list uh, i got bad news you're yeah. gonna be a fit you gotta go back and deal fitting all the toddlers you can, boy <laughs> You know, Boy, that's a that's a rough card to draw. Yeah, I know, kid. So here's an interesting one here. So the headline here: the devil on trial, shock reveal. Can sleeping pills really mimic possession? So this is a possession story. Uh, this was uh, so the, apparently there's a, a Netflix series called The Devil on Trial. anybody really uh, anybody uh, seen this uh, for chance? Mm -hmm. So in 1980, at the age of 11. Um, David Glatzel was allegedly possessed by a demon, which was exercised with the help of the oh boy, with the help of the famed uh, paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Mm, I bet you know who around. they are, don't you, Flag? Oh yeah. They, yeah. These guys well, are well, Ham and know. Eggers. You want to give a little background on these two? Well, everywhere where there might be, uh, might be. I wouldn't say paranormal activity but where there might be publicity related to it <laughs> they seem to show up yeah yeah you ain't kidding so mm -hmm. um this guy's uh believe it or not this guy's possession has been adapted for the screen several times including he everyone's favorite the 2021 movie the conjuring three the devil made me do it uh which mm -hmm. what a i'm sure that was a real winner but it turns out that uh, this guy's uh, people are starting to believe that his mother used uh, drugs to control the sons, uh, and their father also used drugs to control the sons. So they were being they were slipping the kids uh, Somnex, yeah. and it would cause incredible mood swings. The kids would be tired, and so now people are wondering if what happened there was a combination of the toxicity of all that Somnex in their system. Uh, caused them to act weird because I mean clearly they acted weird. Uh, so what do you think? The possibility that uh, this possession was a drug related? Hundred percent, a hundred percent chance. You that like that one? Eh? Kids, where yeah, I think the 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 uh, I'd say somewhere between ninety five and ninety eight percent of all quote unquote possessions are uh, neurological, uh, you know, apparent uh, neurological disorders. Okay, I I'll buy that. What about you, Flack? I mean, I just don't think the average teenager needs that much to act weird. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Most teenagers you know. don't need drugs to act weird. That's you very know, true. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this, Bo, because this is a rare opportunity to have, I mean, like I say, you're a holy man, but you're working on it. Um, what is your opinion on possession, demonic possession, uh, uh, and the like? I mean, I know... The church has a position, but where do you fall? Well, I, I think that I fall in line broadly with what the, the church, and by when I say the church, I mean the Catholic church teaches, is that demonic possession does happen, but it's very, very, very rare. Um, whenever there is a case of demonic possession, like if somebody calls up the priest and says, hey, my sister is uh, possessed, then the, the priest's first move will be like, okay, well, has your sister been to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist? Because uh, most of the time, the issues that people have are issues that are just within brain chemistry. 
Um, you know, there are issues, there are cases like the, the case that the Exorcist film was based off of, which there, there have been cases of, of demonic possession that, that are, that are real. Um, but those cases are so rare that, uh, it, it sort of is, is almost like hitting the lottery in the worst possible way. Interesting. Black, you have a thought? You know, uh, it's just one of those things, like a lot of stuff I just don't know about. You know what I mean? I feel like um, uh, I, I like Boat. I think um, I mean Boat said ninety-five to ninety-eight percent. I'd I'd say I I'd venture a guess and think that it's even higher than that. That um, uh, that most you know most of them have some sort of of worldly explanation. But there's always stuff that that we just don't know about. You know. So and and woe to the person that finds out firsthand. <laughs> I would like to think that. There is no demonic possession, and it's all um, explainable, right? Like it's just fentanyl from ghost drug dealers. Well, you know, I went to, uh, <laughs> I went to, uh, 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 now keep. Pick, Are you going to talk about the psychic fair? Tell me you're going to talk about the psychic fair. No, I didn't. To be honest with you, boat, I hung out outside the psychic play, fair, and me and boat, uh, me and Luke played in the park. So I didn't go into the psychic fair, but I did go to a uh, one of these uh, ghost hunter convention deals. Uh, in Lexington one time, and there was a guy yeah. there, maybe in Scarefest, there was a guy, and I've seen plenty of wacky experts, I'm using air quotes here, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't buying it, but there was a guy that came there, and he was a, um, I mean, incredibly educated man, uh, and he's sort of famous, I wish I could remember his name, but he did a talk on uh, the, on the scientific and historical approach to demonology possession so he was a he was a he was something but he was also a demonologist and i will say uh he had enough cases there that were that would cause me to be concerned <laughs> let's just put it that way yeah. i mean like and i didn't think this guy was a nut job i mean i thought he was an actual guy uh and he and it was quite it was quite informative and it did make me think i'd like to think that stuff doesn't exist but Man, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. And even if it's something, even if it's just a real deep psychological issue and that a priest can maybe come in and maybe cure it just by the fact that he's a priest and knows what to say, I mean, it, that could be it. I mean, or it could be, who knows, devils and demons. You never know. You know, when you get into that sort of spiritual area, uh, <laughs> everyone knows Exodus is one of the all-time scariest films. There was a reason I for will it. never watch that. I will never watch that in my whole life. You're afraid to watch that one? Uh, yeah, I will never watch because I've seen, I've heard so many people who are like horror film diehard people, and they're like, "Yeah, that one's scary." <laughs> nope, no, thank you. I'll be uh, Flack seeing it many times. Would you recommend boat watch that one, Flack? Um, I mean, yeah, with with uh, probably just short in school. Yeah, I would say with the kids. <laughs> <maybe. laughs> yeah, you know. Um, there was a thing I, I I probably mentioned this before, but I have this book. It's an older book. It was about um, uh, like the history of horror films and stuff. And there's kind of like an addendum towards the end, you know. And it says um, after the writing of this book, a new movie has come out, and it's so scary and so terrible and so um, offensive that it may never be topped in the world of, of film and cinema. And of course it's talking about the exorcist. Um, and of course, like at the time it was just like such a shocking film. It was so, um, you know, brutal. And, and there's parts of, I mean, it, it's, it's a film that's definitely like, like made to make you feel uncomfortable. You know, I mean, there's, there's uh, parts of it that are um, like, I, I'm using this, the, the, the true definition of ugly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that like for today's audiences, I mean, there's definitely parts that are shocking still, you know, if the first time you see it, there's, there's shock stuff in there, but I just don't know how bad it is compared to half the movies that are out there now, the horror movies, you know I mean? It's, it seems like every year there's some new gross out, uh, I mean, like like movies like like when I first saw like Saw and those type of movies, and I I watched um, 
the first hostel. I didn't even get all the way through the first hostel movie. I just thought this isn't for me anymore. Yeah. Like it's uh, you're born. You know, I don't, I don't watch. Yeah. It. yeah, yeah, it's just not for me. You know, my my horror was the fun, not not necessarily comedy horror, but you know, fun like Friday the Thirteenth movies. I mean, it's not a comedy. It's a guy, you know, guy that kills people, but it was entertaining in a, in, a, in its own way and. And uh, those those type of movies just aren't entertaining, you know. So that that I think Exorcist is definitely um, like is a fork in horror cinema, right? You yeah. know. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know. I just don't know how bad it is compared to some of the new stuff that's out there. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it. Now. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm so much of a weenie that like I feel like there's a cutoff in cinema for me. Like even watching that uh, the the BBC Dracula, like there was there's like some blood and stuff in there, and I'm just like, man, I already don't like this very much. So I just I think that my line in the sand is several hundred yards behind most people's. Yeah, well, I mean, I would like to see a movie like a if you start another stream, a movie review show with boat and the guy in his attic. <laughs> they probably do have that first like the Cisco and Ebert of Boat's house, you know. <laughs> you know, this is here, get this. This is local news as fresh as today's headline. This is from uh, Monday, October 14th of this year. Paranormal activity at the Putnam Aging Center. So I picked this out for a reason. This made the t local TV. Uh, so. Um, there was a uh, there's a van they used at the Putnam Aging Center that they used to transport stuff, and the staff arrived one morning to find that the van's doors were wide open. Uh, Flack, you should take note of this. This could happen to you. And so yep. nothing was stolen. No, no evidence was found. They just thought some thieves or something had gotten into it. So they went back to look at the uh, footage on the security camera, and they were just they were alarmed to find out that at 1.19 a.m., the doors just opened by themselves. Uh, there was no explanation ever found. The door, the, uh, for why the doors did that, they just jiggled a little bit and they just opened. Uh, and the, uh, uh, it's, it, <laughs> it's, what's interesting to me about this is I actually have worked in the Putnam Aging Center. Uh, the Putnam Aging Center is, sets down uh, near the river uh, yeah. uh, and it's very, very close. In fact, I think the monuments in like their backyard. Uh, it's very close to where the Battle of Scary Creek was. It's funny we talked about that like last week briefly. Flack. Uh, the Battle of Scary Creek was a battle uh, uh, here in Putnam County where uh, the Confederates held off some some uh, Union troops uh, at the battle. It's sort of well known around here just because it's sort of like our battle. But there is some speculation that the uh, that the uh, the van uh, the van door opening was somehow connected to this battlefield. So I well, I was in so believe it or not at one time me and the Chud formed a computer uh, establishment C CW Computers, and we were going through no what was it maybe it was A W whatever oh D W excuse me. And we were going. That's a that's a heck of a name for a computer place. That instills confidence. D W. <laughs> and so we were gonna we were installing new computers. This is the first and only gig we ever had was the aging program. And so we were in there after they closed, and we told them all, "Hey, we're gonna get all your computers installed while you're gone. It'd be a piece of cake." This would have been circa ninety, eighty nine or or ninety, and. It didn't go that good, uh, believe it or not. It was horrible. And it, right about halfway through the night, I looked over, and the chair was asleep on the floor in mid-computer <laughs> installation. So I had to pick up the slack. But I will say, that building is a creepy building for whatever reason. I don't know what was in there before the aging program. And, and you could hear the river outside, if you, it, or you could hear water. I assume that's what it is. So, it's a, so I wasn't terribly surprised to hear this. But I thought that was kind of neat that something like that would be so close to home. Have you ever been down to the aging program uh, building boat or over to the mine? I've driven. I mean, you know, I, you drive by there all the time. Yeah. You know, whenever you take the St. Albans exit and you turn left, um, they're giving away all kinds of uh, canes and wheelchairs these days. They oh, good. Got, and That's they're, good they're hiring drivers. That's what I know about it. That's good to know. They're hiring drivers too, eh? Okay. That's not too bad uh, in case um, I need a gig. 
Go ahead. You know, Mode. Rob, talking about vans, have you ever thought about the angle of, you know, driving the van out to a seminary? To a seminary, seminary. not a seminary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what an <laughs> I angle. I guess that could be scary in a different way. <laughs> you do a, uh, to a, uh, a cemetery or some sort of haunted location and do a, a stealth camp there? I mean, it, I've thought about it. You know, the, the problem with it is, I mean, like my van looks like a worker type van, you know, which is, is good for certain places like urban kind of camping and stuff. But when you're in a cemetery in a big van with no windows, it just looks like you're up to no good. You know, <laughs> it's just, I think perhaps, we, perhaps you need a stealth hearse. <laughs> <for it. laughs> that would be, I would do that. Now, Aaron's story, uh, I, I clipped something out for you. Uh, for the show, this is just a, a a brief, like one paragraph story, but this is from CBS News, uh, and uh, I thought you guys might find this interesting. It says um, uh, this is from uh, two years ago, uh, 2022. It says there has been an increase in the number of reports of possible hauntings at homes amid the pandemic lockdown. Believers say they have no way to keep themselves socially distant from the spirit world <laughs> and claim they have been subjected to an extra dose of paranormal activity during the coronavirus quarantine. Paranormal investigators believe uh, some are likely the real deal, but others have simpler explanations. Quote, people are spending more time in their home and everything from wood drying out uh, you're getting popping sounds because they're getting into the warmer months and so on and so forth. So, uh, they, you know, basically some people wrote this off as saying that, uh, you know, because people were spending more time in their homes, like what boat said about, you know, having a house settle or things that people were just uh, hearing more of those types of sounds. Now the, um, it says since the lockdowns, uh, around the U S began in March, uh, this website, which is the Atlantic Paranormal Society, has had a jump in reports of hauntings. And while there may be no scientific evidence that ghosts exist, a survey by YouGov says 45% of adults in the United States say that they do believe in ghosts. Hmm. <laughs> you know, so the pandemic, <laughs> you know, it's funny. The, that, that pandemic and the lockdown is going to have repercussions that we'll never fully understand i think i think it's already had tons but i think i'm not terribly surprised at the content of that article because i mean they're not wrong people are spending more time at home they, they didn't have any choice but there's also there was a, that uneasy feeling that you always had it reminded me of the cold war that's what it reminded me of that's what the pandemic reminded me that same kind of feeling where like well, we're all screwed you know this mm -hmm. is it. this could be the big one uh, and so when you've got, when you combine being a shut-in and being sort of n subconsciously nervous, I could see where you would start feeling uneasy in your own home. Boat, yeah. any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I remember the first night of the lockdown. I mean, we were never locked down, but the first night when they were like, all right, nobody needs to go out anywhere, you know? I thought, it, uh, yeah, I was scared that we were going to have some sort of purge-like situation where armed, you know, gangs would take to the streets mm -hmm. of Hurricane. Yeah. I was seriously freaked out by that because, I mean, that something like that had never happened before. So th those kind of situations put you in a mindset where you're willing to believe things that aren't necessarily rational. Yeah, you know, there, there's the old joke about, um, you know, the two hunters uh, seeing a bear. And uh, the one guy puts on his running shoes and, uh, you know, the, the other hunter says, there's no way you can outrun a bear. And he says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to out outrun you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, it was the same kind of thing, like, like um, you know, during the, the pandemic and, and like, uh, you know, what you're talking about, Boat, is um, uh, like, I that's what I worry about is not like, you know, the roving gangs of, of uh people that decide they're going to take over stuff. I worry about my neighbor. Like if we run out of food, you know, he doesn't have to go rob, you know, some grocery store. He just has to come over and kill me. Right. <laughs> so that's what I was worried about. You know, just the, the, the closer type type threat. I would hate to have been in a, in a bigger city during that. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we had going for us here is that there's plenty of room 
So it's not like you can't walk out of your, like, some places where you're in apartments or, you know, you live downtown. I mean, it's a big deal, you know, for us. Could we walk out in the backyard? Yes. Like, even boat came over. Remember that? We shot an Ice the Amigos out in the backyard during that yeah, thing, you know. Yeah. And we, so it wasn't the worst, but you're right. That was, you talk about true horror. Uh, that, right, that event was, because uh, you never need, like Boat said, you didn't know how the public was going to act. Most of them behave mm-hmm. themselves, you know, but, uh, and then you also didn't know where the virus is going to stop. So, you know, let's hope <laughs> we don't have to worry about that yeah. anytime in the future, but that's the last thing we yeah. need. Um, Flack, uh, boy, I sure do appreciate you, uh, setting in, uh, and doing this with me all these past four weeks. Why don't you tell the people if they want more Flack in their lives, where can they get it? Hey, you know, the easiest thing to do is go to um, robohara.com forward slash links. And that has links to uh, my podcast. It has links to, uh, you know, things like Twitter and Instagram and my website and all that stuff. So it's all kind of all in one place like that. So I'm kind of all over the place, but uh, that's one good centralized thing. And I believe there's a link on that also to Big Rob's Van, but also bigrobsvan.com forward slash links has all links to uh the, all the all the van stuff the youtube and the instagram and, and all that kind of stuff if you haven't if you haven't checked out or you're new to uh flack which i don't know how that's possible but for god's sake <laughs> to get in the halloween spirit uh he does a podcast called you don't know flack it's been running forever and he's got some great halloween stuff in there and some just and everything in there is gold uh amongst his other uh treasure trove of podcasts so uh please check him out uh, he does great stuff. Plus, it, check out his uh, YouTube channel as well. Now, uh, I want to give a hearty thanks to the boat for popping in. On a couple yes, weeks. yes, always, yes. Uh, it's always great to have you in, boater. And why don't you tell the people if they need more boat in their life, where can they get more boat action? Um, probably uh, the Amigos Everything Amiga podcast. I heard of that. I heard that's awesome. Yeah. Every every Friday. Uh, except when it's on Wednesday or Thursday, but it's it's usually <laughs> weekly. Yeah, and uh, you can find it right here where we are on Twitch right now, or at uh, uh, YouTube.com/slash Amigos Retro Gaming, or on the podcast player of your choice. Very good, very good. Just look, just Google us, brother. You'll see us. You'll see us. Well, fellas, I think it's time that that I reluctantly call this uh, call this sucker to a close. Uh, we've had four big episodes. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I think you might get a charge out of them. And, of course, we, this is probably, I think, episode 13 or 14 of this show. And these shows are evergreen. So if you want to go back uh, for some scary stories or some uh, talks about dreams, UFOs, we've done a, pretty much a ton of different topics. Uh, you can uh, go search through the archives. Uh, there are plenty of them there. And we appreciate everybody for checking us out. Uh, All your nice comments. We appreciate. And I hope everybody has a happy and healthy Halloween. Uh, I would steer clear of the cemetery if you could help it. Uh, And we will catch you guys next October for another round of Conversations from the Dark Side. Good night, everybody. You have just experienced conversations from the dark side. Until next week, try to enjoy the daylight.